friends, uh, I'm Rabbi Richard Block, Senior Rabbi of the Temple to Fareth Israel, and it's my sad privilege uh, today to officiate at our service as we mourn the death and celebrate the life of Harold Friedman. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan v'adonai lakach, yehi shem Adonai mevorach. God has given, God has taken away, Blessed be the name of God. In ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and with the valley of shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us, yet the centuries have taught us that a good name endures beyond the grave and that there is strength in faith. With Job, we say, Adonai Natan, God, you have given. And Harold, you gave us a loved one who will not be forgotten. For all that was good and enduring in his life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. God, you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our sorrowing hearts into an altar of trust for, for which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love. As now we say, Yehi Shem Adonai Mavarach, blessed be the name of God, now and forever. Death has taken our beloved herald. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, be with them. For Harold's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever, for his companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of his heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance, for all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ancient yet ever new message of God's nearness. It tells us of our kinship with the creator in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in light, life as in death. Happy are those who have not followed the counsel of the wicked or taken the path of sinners or joined the company of the insolent. Rather, the teaching of God is their delight and they study that teaching day and night. They are like a tree planted beside streams of water that yields its fruit in season, whose foliage never fades and whose fruit always flourishes. Adonai, who may abide in your house, who may dwell in your holy mountain, those who are upright, who do justly, who speak the truth within their hearts, who do not slander others or wrong them or bring shame upon them, who scorn the lawless but honor those who revere God, who give their word and come what may do not retract, who do not exploit others, who do not take bribes. Those who live in this way shall never be shaken. <coughs> These are the beautiful Hebrew words of the 23rd Psalm. Adonai ro'i loek tsar, Binodesha Yarbitseni, Alme Minuchot Yinachaleni, Nafshi Yeshovev, Yan Cheni Vamagle Tzedek Lama Anshamo, Gam Ki Elech Begates Al Mavat Lo Ira Ra, Ki Ata Imadi, Shiftecha Umishantecha, Hema Yinachamuni, Ta Arok Lafanai Shulcha Neged Sorarai, Tishanta Vashemen Roshi Kosi Ravaya, Ach Tob Vachesed Yirdafuni Koyeme Chayai, I invite you to join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From Psalm 90. O God, you have been our refuge in every generation. Before the mountains came into being, before you brought forth the earth and the world, from eternity to eternity, you are God. You return us to dust. You decree, return you mortals. For in your sight, a thousand years are as yesterday when it is past, 
as a watch in the night. You engulf us in sleep. We are like grass that renews itself. At daybreak it flourishes anew. At dusk it withers and dries up. The span of our life is three score years and ten, or given strength four score years. But the best of those years have trouble and sorrow. They pass by speedily, and we are in darkness. Teach us, therefore, so to number our days that we may attain a heart of wisdom. Turn to us, O God. Show mercy to your servants. Satisfy us at daybreak with your steadfast love that we may sing for joy all our days. Let your deeds be seen by your servants, your glory by their children. May your favor, O God, be upon us. Establish the work of our hands that it may long endure. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, we find these words of wisdom. <clears throat> for everything there is a season, a time for every experience under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Friends, as you know, this is a time at which our Jewish tradition calls upon us to speak words of gratitude, of blessing, of praise and appreciation. The sorrow that death brings us is but the measure of the blessing that the life of our loved one brought us. And Jewish tradition bids us to find room in our hearts along with grief for gratitude. And so... We come to remember, to thank God for the life of Harold Friedman. Harold, as you know, was a most remarkable man who led an honorable, meritorious life, a distinguished career in the law, a phenomenal record of leadership and public service. He was a loving and beloved husband, father and grandfather, brother and uncle. At the insistence of his devoted wife, Nancy, of 55 years, Harold wrote a brief autobiographical statement detailing the highlights of his educational, professional, and communal achievements. And I want to share some of those with you. He graduated from Cleveland Heights High School in 1952 from the Ohio State University summa cum laude, where he held leadership positions and received numerous other honors. He graduated at CWRU Law School, where he earned Order of the Coif and was chosen Editor-in-Chief of the Law Review. He served in the National Guard, then launched his legal career from 1981 to 2014. He practiced real estate, corporate, and tax law at Ulmer and Byrne, was the first chair of its real estate group. He was included in the first edition of Best Lawyers of America and in every edition thereafter until his retirement. He received Cleveland Bar Association's Bob Rosewater Memorial Award. His community leadership included service on numerous boards, including the Jewish Federation of Cleveland. He served as vice chair of its endowment committee. And his leadership ability and Jewish commitment were recognized early as he was uh, awarded the prestigious Marvin and Milton Cain Leadership Award in 1974. He served as president of Metro Health Foundation of Cleveland Hillel Foundation, of Jewish Vocational Service of Cleveland, of the International Association of Jewish Vocational Agencies, and on the boards of Big Brothers, Belfair, Jewish Family Service, the Bureau of Jewish Education, and not least, Temple to Ferreth Israel. Wow. If we knew nothing else about Harold, we would know from this impressive list that he was a consummate professional, brilliant, generous, and communally minded, a gifted natural leader who earned widespread respect and trust. But he was infinitely more than can be represented on a resume. Harold's desire to help others was not driven by ego or ambition. He was proud of his achievements, but he was essentially a modest, 
humble man, a child of immigrant parents, the first in his family to go to college. His desire to help and guide and mentor was at the very essence of his being. His family, his professional colleagues, his clients, his partners in nonprofit endeavors of both the Jewish and general community recognized in Harold a wise and thoughtful mentor, reliable, responsible, consistent, steady and solid, with vast knowledge, high integrity, deep intellect, always offering sage, helpful counsel. A man who was always more interested in others than he was in himself. Harold and Nancy met through a friend while she was a student at Wellesley. But their relationship really began to develop when Nancy's mother read that Harold had scored first on the Ohio bar exam <laughs> in the summer of 1959. And she wisely, one might also suggest cunningly, suggested, or perhaps instructed, Nancy to write a note of congratulations to Harold. This led to a course of correspondence and then marriage in 1961 at the Temple to Fareth Israel in Luntz Auditorium by Rabbi, uh, Rabbis Abba Hillel Silver and Jack Herman. Nancy was attracted to Harold's intelligence, his wide range of interests, his maturity and good values. Their relationship just felt natural. She could tell that he would be a good husband, father, and partner in building a family and a life and someone to whom she could look for advice. Nancy described their marriage yesterday to me as a good marriage, an excellent marriage, with a relationship of give and take. In many ways, they were polar opposites who complemented each other beautifully. It was a marriage for better or worse, richer or poorer, in sickness or health, until parted by death. Throughout the years, they enjoyed travel and dining out and cultural activities, art, music, and theater, though Harold enjoyed some of those, especially music, more than Nancy. She was a good sport. And they loved and enjoyed doing things with their three kids and eight grandchildren, attending countless contests, uh, concerts and plays and games. Harold, like Nancy, was deeply interested in and tremendously proud of each and every one of them and reveled in their every accomplishment. A tremendous commonality of themes emerged when I gathered with the family yesterday. Harold will be reminded as a voice of reason, 100% father and grandfather, 100% mentor. They gratefully recall how they depended on him for advice and consolation and steadfast, unwavering support. How their trusted confidant was their beloved father and grandfather, literally to his last day. How generous he was with his time and resources. They will always recall his amazing memory for places and facts, his sense of humor with an occasional touch of sarcasm, his love of music, which inspired them to take up instruments themselves, his love of learning, which led him to take classes at the JCC, Case Western and the Temple. How his confidence in them and his inspiring example helped them achieve more than they thought they could and become the people they are or choose their career paths and life paths. They will always remember how brave and uncomplaining he was during the years when he dealt with a terminal illness and the awful side effects of treatment. How he refused to indulge in self-pity or give in uh, to it and maintained despite the struggle a good mood, a matter of factness, a positive attitude. How at every step of the medical journey he simply did what had to be done and moved on determined to live his life to the fullest possible and continue to do what he loved. Toward the end, he courageously refused further treatment, didn't want to live on a ventilator or be dependent on others for his basic needs. How he just spent the last eight months of his life making sure that every member of the family felt taken care of and that they and the organizations to which he was, was devoted could continue to function after his death with a simple a transition as possible. Debbie will forever be grateful that her dad was as much a father figure as a grandfather to her girls, a tower of strength and love in a very difficult time. Jay compared his dad's quiet temperament to the E.F. Hutton commercial. When Harold talked, 
people listened and recalled his telling him that he had never had a day of depression in his life and he wasn't planning to start. As the youngest, Susie was the only child at home for several years. In many long discussions that she had with her dad, who made her breakfast every day, she learned how liberal he was, how accepting of people, how important social justice was to him. And when she became a law student and then a lawyer, he was a treasured resource and a peerless mentor. Rachel, the oldest grandchild, will always remember, remember Harold as a strong father figure. She feels so lucky to have lived down the street. That wouldn't be who she is in terms of academics and interests or doing as well without him. Harold taught Sarah a lot, including the perspective on life that everything is relative. She observed that he didn't have to go out of his way to help others and care for others. It was just who he was. Elise admires his leadership and helpful advice. He taught her how to advocate and stick up for herself and helped her recognize what she really wanted to do and be as she grows up. Rebecca's own community involvement was influenced by her grandfather's. Seeing how he touched so many lives, she wants to do that with her life. Gabrielle will cherish special memories of his thoughtfulness and recalls how her grandfather would come to, and grandmother would come to any game, every game she played with the band, and even when it was cold outside, even when he grew increasingly frail. He always remained interested in her in what and how she did. For Leah, her grandfather was more than anyone the person she most wanted to impress. And when she was named captain of the soccer team, he was the one she most wanted to tell. She will especially cherish the small mundane moments and events that they shared. Josh, who lives in Minneapolis, recalls that whenever he came to Cleveland to visit his grandparents, his grandfather always asked how he was first. Even when he was in the hospital in an awful situation, his focus was not on himself, but on Josh. Despite a serious liver infection, Harold attended Josh's bar mitzvah and wanted to be a part of everything. Bethany, the youngest, will always be grateful for her grandfather's support. Four years ago, around the time of Harold's ocular melanoma diagnosis, she was diagnosed with an eye disease. But all that Harold was concerned about was how she was doing and, uh, with, and with her progress, not with his own problems. So very characteristic of his generous spirit. Harold lived a good, satisfying, and meaningful life. His Judaism was important to him. There was a strong Jewish background in his family. I'm told that his paternal grandfather was a Talmudic scholar, and he was a serious religious Jew. Though he didn't grow up at the temple, he was deeply loyal to it. He was excited about the transformation of the temple's historic building at University Circle. And uh, at Rebecca's recent graduation from Temple High School, we took the families down to the chapel then under construction in Beechwood. It was a mess. He had trouble seeing, and he had to drag his oxygen tent with him through the construction debris, but he insisted on coming with us. He was very excited about the ongoing transformation of the Beechwood facility of our temple into a full-featured congregational home. He and Nancy often attended Shabbat services and adult education programs at the temple, and all of our clergy were and remain very fond of them both. Harold is survived by his wife, Nancy, his children, Debbie, Jay, and Susie, daughter-in-law, Judith, his grandchildren, Rachel, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, Elise and Josh, Gabrielle and Bethany, his brother, Daniel, and his wife, Kay, and numerous nieces and nephews, as well as countless friends, colleagues, and associates. Your presence today means a great deal to the family. And Nancy asked me to let you know how grateful Harold was and she is for all of the visitors, friends, and family who came to see Harold on a regular basis in the last several months. It meant the world to him to visit, conduct business, and continue to be active in everyone's lives, even when he had difficulty physically getting around. Our tradition teaches that we live on in many ways after our physical death. We live on if we are blessed in the very essence of our children and grandchildren and the generations to come. We live on in the ways we affect the lives of others for goodness and blessing. 
We, we live on in the way others are inspired to emulate our example, to give something of meaning and purpose and enduring worth to the world. We live on in the causes and the institutions in which we invest our life's energies and which are more important and enduring than our own fleeting, mortal, sometimes lonely and confused selves. And we live on in the loving embrace of God who gives us life and in whose power all is possible. In these ways and more, Harold will continue to live among us and be an inspiring blessing. Zecher Tzadik Libracha, may the memory of this righteous man continue to bless us all. I know that each of you brings your own precious memories of Harold with you today, and so we pause for a few moments of reflection and memory as we thank God for the gift of his life. We ask you please to rise as you are able. Eomale Rachamim, Shochen Bam Romim, Hamse Menucha Nechona Takat Kanfea Shechina, Im Kedoshi Mutohorim Kazohar Harakia Mazirim, Et Nishmatsvi Ben Yosef Miriam, Shehalach Olamo, Bala Rachamim Yasti Rehu Beseter Kenafab Olamim, Vietor Betor Hachahim at Nishmato. Adonai hu nechalato, v'yanuach v'shalom amish kavo, v'nomar, amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Harold E. Friedman, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace, and let us say, amen if you would be seated. Friends, this concludes the, this portion of our service. Uh, we will be continuing with the interment at uh, Mayfield Cemetery immediately following. Uh, and uh, those who wish to visit with the family are invited to do so following services until 4 p.m. today, Saturday evening from 7 to 9, and Sunday from 4 to 7 uh, from I think one to four and seven to nine, if I'm not mistaken. We'll be reading uh, Harold's name on the memorial list of the Temple to Fareth Israel uh, this evening and for the following three Friday evenings. Our service is at six o'clock and any who wish to join us are cordially invited to do so. Thank you for joining the family on this sad but important occasion. Go in peace. <coughs>